Previously, we've explored the first moments of the universe, which led to a boundless abyss filled with hydrogen and helium gases. In this video, we'll continue our journey through to the formation of galaxies, stars, and eventually planets. Today, Origin of the Universe Part 2, Star Formation. The universe lingered in this same state for millions of years. These are the Dark Ages. But very slowly, the weakest of the fundamental forces, gravitation, was starting to act. Particles with mass constantly pulled the fabric of space-time toward them, attracting other objects. This is called gravitation. It's the driving force behind the formation of most massive structures in the universe. It's what pulls us down towards Earth, holds the Moon in orbit around the Earth, and the Earth around the Sun. The more mass inhabiting a region of space, the stronger its attraction. As the gases fill in the universe turbulate, certain regions start to densify. Their gravitational pull gets stronger, they start amassing more and more gas, which gets compressed into tight spheres under its own gravity. Inside the spheres, the gas particles get so packed together, they interact and vibrate violently, spewing photons everywhere. The electrons get stripped from the nuclei and swim around, turning the gas into plasma, while the nuclei start colliding and fusing into heavier elements. This generates immense outward pressure, which eventually balances out the gravitational pull of the plasma ball. The ball of gas ignites, a new star is born. The first stars started forming when the universe was about 150 million years old, marking the end of the Dark Ages. These are called Population 3 stars. Most of them are hundreds of times the mass of our Sun. Their immense gravitational pull squeezes them into pressures much higher than today's stars. Particle collisions are so violent that the photons produced have enough energy to produce electron-positron pairs, causing a drop in radiation pressure. This eventually causes gravity to take over. The stars collapse under their own weights, pressures skyrocket, and nuclear reactions suddenly accelerate to very high rates causing the stars to bounce and explode, releasing their materials into giant molecular clouds, in parent stability supernovas. The clouds, made up of hydrogen and helium, as well as small amounts of other heavier elements fused inside the stars or during the supernovas, collapse back into smaller stars. These are population 2 stars. Their weaker gravity and internal pressures mean that they can live much longer than their ancestors. The smallest of them survive to this day. They make up some of the oldest stars ever discovered. They go on to fuse bigger amounts of metals and other materials abundant today in the universe. Zooming out, the stars themselves and the surrounding cosmic gases interact gravitationally. They swirl around, seeding what would eventually become today's galaxies. The first of them started to take shape when the universe was less than a billion years old. As time passes, the proto-galaxies will continue to merge and grow larger. And on the largest scale, the denser regions continue to condense into filament-like structures. Zooming back into the galaxies, nuclear fusion continues inside the stars for the next few billion years. In the span of its life, the core of a star, where pressure is at its greatest, will continue to fuse heavier and heavier elements, such as carbon and oxygen, and up to iron. However, the fusion of elements heavier than iron does not generate any outward pressure to oppose the pull of gravity. As iron continues to accumulate in the core and past a certain critical point, gravity takes over. In a matter of seconds, the iron core collapses under its weight producing a shockwave that blasts the outer layers into space in a Type II supernova. The explosion is violent enough to fuse the rest of the heavy elements, such as gold. Let's travel to the young Milky Way, 4.6 billion years in the past. In its periphery, 
A giant cloud of gas and dust, remnants of a past supernova is floating around. This is a solar nebula. It will eventually form our solar system. It contains the wide variety of metals and molecular compounds abundant today, including water. The shockwave of a nearby supernova hits the cloud, causing turbulence. Denser regions pull more and more dust. The nebula starts to collapse, thus amplifying any slight net rotation it had. The dust starts spinning rapidly and flattens around its axis of rotation. The dense center of the cloud collapses into a new star. The sun is born. The remaining disk of dust continues to orbit. The matter closer to the center, being under a stronger pull of gravity, orbits faster. This creates friction between the different levels of the disk, causing swirls which condense into rocks, which then collide and melt together to form larger rocks, planetesimals. Over millions of years, the rocks and dust continue to clump together and grow. Their gravity becomes notable, by which they attract even more material. Forming dwarf planets flattened into spheres due to their own gravitational pull. Unlike in the hot inner regions, the cold outer parts of the solar system have extra material in the form of ice. They clump together much faster and form very large icy cores, many times the mass of the Earth. With their intense gravity, they capture copious amounts of gas blasted away by solar winds, forming giant atmospheres much larger than their cores. These are the gas giants, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune. They formed very early on, within just a few million years. Closer to the Sun, dwarf planets continue to form and grow over tens of millions of years. Some of them smash together and merge, while others reach the outer regions, where they get captured by the gas giants as moons. 4.5 billion years ago, about 100 million years into the formation of the solar system, a Mars-sized planet called Theia collided with the young Earth. The two planets fuse into one, and the large amounts of debris thrown into orbit gravitationally clumped to form the Moon. After everything settles down, four planets remained in the inner orbits, Mercury, Venus, Earth and Mars. Asteroids which did not collect to form planets remained in the asteroid belts. In a way, these are like museums containing failed planets in different stages of their development. Everywhere throughout the universe, planetary systems are constantly forming. A significant portion of the stars we see in the night sky have planets orbiting them which we can detect using various methods. Even today, other planetary systems in various stages of development can be seen through our telescopes. The planets continue to get bombarded by the remaining asteroids. The impacts trigger volcanic activity, and large amounts of gases get released, such as nitrogen and CO2, forming thick atmospheres held down by the planet's gravities. The water contained in the asteroids also released into the atmosphere as vapor. Earth and Mars later cooled down for this vapor to precipitate and form rivers and oceans, though in Mars' case, the water eventually dried out. It's in the depths of these bodies of water that the most fascinating feats of chemistry emerged on Earth, biological life. We'll explore its origins in the next video.